I recently got the Canon EOS R and I've really been enjoying using this camera for most of my photography work. Here are some of my favorite photos that I've taken in the last month or so using the camera. If you're new here, my name is Mitch and I am a photographer and filmmaker based in Australia. On this YouTube channel, I mainly shoot landscape, travel, portrait and fashion photography, but my main source of income in my own professional business is actually weddings and commercial web and television content. So for those jobs, I actually use a combination of the Fuji X-T3 and the Red Raven cinema camera. The reason why I chose the EOS R for most of my YouTube and photography content is actually three really simple reasons. Flip screen, full frame sensor, and dual pixel autofocus. Plus having a long history with Canon cameras, I have owned some kind of Canon camera since I think around 2013. So you'll notice by the title of this video, this is the EOS R versus the EOS RP, kind of like a real world test. Uh, now, why did I consider getting an RP? Well, the truth is I never considered buying an EOS RP. It was actually a close friend of mine who saw me using the EOS R, decided to try it out for a photo shoot and kind of fell in love with it. And so when it came to him deciding to actually buy an EOS R, I told him, hang on a second, why don't you consider the RP? Because it's almost the same uh, with a few minor differences. It is about $1,000 cheaper than the EOS R. So I decided to take the EOS R, which is filming me right now, as well as the EOS RP on a photo shoot for a bit of a head-to-head -head test. And I was using the EF to RF adapter on both cameras, as well as the exact same lens. So you guys will know this is one of my favorite lenses, the 35 mm 1.4 Art from Sigma. I wanna say a massive shout out to DigiDirect in Brisbane. You might remember they also helped me out with the Sony a7 III for my test. They also loaned me the EOS RP and this lens. I'm so grateful, thank you guys, appreciate it so much. I'm gonna leave a link in the description to DigiDirect Brisbane. Make sure you go and check them out. So just a few other things to keep in mind before we jump into this video. I'm just gonna be comparing these two cameras based on what I shoot and what I need from a camera. The EF to RF adapter works great with these EF lenses. You're getting really, really fast autofocus speed. It's basically a native EF solution for your RF mount camera. So the main points for me are going to be autofocus speed and accuracy. Dynamic range is a big one for me, as well as handling in general. I'm also gonna be keeping an eye on the battery in these two cameras, seeing as the EOS RP has a newer style battery than the EOS R, and it is quite a bit smaller. Now, being that these two cameras have different sensors in them, even though they're both full frame, they are of a different design. So the EOS RP, I believe, has a 26 megapixel sensor, whereas the EOS R has a 30 megapixel sensor. Now, on DxO Mark, the company that does all of those um, really scientific tests around ISO and dynamic range and portrait bit depth and all those kinds of things, they basically say that the EOS R has just over a one-stop advantage in terms of dynamic range over the RP, but the RP, is apparently better in low light, but it's only by, I think, around 100 points. So we're just gonna keep that in mind. Obviously, this is a real world test, not a scientific test. So when we're editing these images, we can kind of keep that in mind and then see if that like really matches up, lines up in the real world. So we're at our shoot location with Anna, who's gonna be our model today. So I've got the EOS R and the EOS RP gonna be handling both cameras at the same time, um, trying to get a good comparison between both. We're shooting in this greenhouse location today, which should be quite cool with the glass ceiling. It's gonna have a lot of light coming through, so we'll get to test the dynamic range of these two cameras. So let's get into shooting. So again, just bring both hands up to your face. Yeah, that's nice. The shutter on the EOS R is definitely louder. Beautiful. Great. Just take one step back one. That's it. Really nice. 
Just both hands on the hips there as well. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so with these two cameras, I'm basically switching between two focus modes. Um, the first is just the single point um, focus, so just usually using like the center area or moving the point around the screen. Um, and the second one is the face tracking. So I'll just switch between those, like based on the situation. If I get like a clear view of Anna's face um, where it's picking up her face, or if I'm trying to do a shot where her face is partially blocked, I'll just switch back to the single point. So I found that the face tracking works really well on both of these cameras. The dual pixel autofocus is pretty much identical between the two bodies. So in this scenario, we're sort of going to be underexposing a little bit to kind of keep some of the detail in the sky behind Anna and then see how both cameras do with pulling back the shadow detail. So only in the R, I know that there, you can actually bring back a lot of shadow detail. But interesting to see how the RP keeps up. Even lean your body down towards me a little bit more. Yeah, beautiful. So right now we're using the face tracking. Seems to be pretty good. Switch over to the single point. Because we're really close, we have to be careful with our focus. So if Anna moves any closer or further to the camera, we need to refocus and compose again. That's nice. So we're really underexposing here. See if we can pull back some of this shadow detail. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Got that glow coming through the ceiling. It's really nice. Bring that hand up to your chin again. That was really nice. Yeah, that's that's good. Both is good. Do that with your hair again, how you like pushed it up. Yeah, but just hold it. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Bring your elbows in when you do that. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so we just finished up shooting inside the greenhouse. We're gonna head outside now and see what we can find. The face tracking works from like a long distance away. Mm, good pattern, so. I love the background.
I hope you guys enjoyed that behind the scenes. Now for my final thoughts on the camera now that I've seen the edited images. First of all, I want to talk about handling, actually using the camera. I have to say I did enjoy shooting with the R a little bit more, simply because of the more significant grip, it felt better in my hand, as well as the bigger viewfinder. So when you're looking through the viewfinder, even though I didn't do that a lot for this shoot, um, mainly using the back of the screen so that you guys could see what was going on in terms of the focusing and all that kind of thing. The EOS R has a bigger viewfinder so it's more comfortable to look at. The back LCD screen as well on the EOS R is a little bit bigger so it's just a little bit more comfortable to shoot with. So the battery life was actually the biggest surprise here. So at the end of the shoot the EOS R had half its battery left on the battery indicator, so two out of four bars, whereas the EOS RP still had a full battery indicator. So that was really, really interesting. Now, I'm not sure if that's because the EOS RP consumes less power due to its smaller screen, smaller viewfinder, things like that, but it was definitely surprising seeing as the RP has a lower rating of how many photos that it can take per battery. Now to the files themselves. So looking at these raw files in the Lightroom, there is really not much difference and you'd be pretty hard pressed to tell the difference straight off the bat. However, when you start processing and pushing the files around in Lightroom, you can see a small difference. So I would say on the highlight side for dynamic range, you can recover kind of a similar amount of highlight detail. In terms of recovering shadow information, this is where the difference lies. I was able to push the EOS R up to, I'd say around four stops in exposure in Lightroom without seeing a dramatic amount of color noise. Whereas the EOS RP, around two and a half to three stops bringing that exposure slider up, it was really starting to struggle. So the EOS R I think is definitely going to suit more landscape photographers, maybe uh, people who are doing real estate photography where you have large dynamic range scenes and you need to capture all that detail. Or if you wanna go for the RP, you might just have to find some kind of HDR or bracketing solution to capture all the dynamic range in your scene. Things that I like about the EOS RP over the EOS R, definitely size and weight. This thing's tiny. The EOS R is pretty small actually, but this goes another step and it's very, very portable, easy to carry around. And I guess it would be very easy to travel with. The thing that I like is this mode dial on top. So if you can see that, the EOS R actually doesn't have that and instead it has a button on top that you press and then you can scroll that wheel and choose the mode, which I think is kind of a little bit annoying. It just adds an extra step and then it adds another step as well when you need to switch over to video mode. And so having this dial on the top, I think is really, really helpful. The focus accuracy and the speed of the autofocus is identical between these two cameras. I really didn't see a difference at all. Another thing to consider as well is that when you turn off the EOS R, the shutter curtains come down, which protects the sensor from dust when you're changing lenses. Whereas on the RP, you don't have that feature. The image sensor is always exposed. If you're on a budget, I definitely can recommend the EOS RP. Apart from being able to shoot more frames per second on the EOS R, you're really paying for those extra comforts like having a bigger grip, bigger screen, larger EVF, those kinds of things. Also, if you guys are interested in watching a video talking about how I edit my photos in Lightroom, I've already made that video and I'll link that one in the description as well. If you did enjoy this video, guys, make sure you leave a thumbs up down below. This channel is dedicated to helping anybody who wants to make it in photography and filmmaking. So if you wanna see more content, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to get notified every time I upload a video. And I wanna thank you guys once again and I'll catch you in the next one.